everybody, Backyard Bullion here. Welcome once again to another Ponderous Wednesday where we take a slow, leisurely ramble around an interesting and thought-provoking topic. This week we are going to be talking about the impact of the recent European elections and Brexit because, well, it's relevant and it really does make a big difference for the future of silver stacking in the UK. Now, for those of you who are not aware, uh, Brexit is a thing. <laughs> Brexit is the UK leaving the European Union. We were meant to leave back, uh, gosh, in March, but we didn't. And now we are scheduled to leave theoretically at the end of October. But there's all of these wondrous changes going on in the UK at the moment. We saw Theresa May hand in her resignation, so to speak, last week. And she'll be leaving in June. And then we'll have a completely undemocratically elected new prime minister, which is a whole kettle of fish all in of itself. Maybe there'll be a general election in due course, maybe there won't. Maybe there'll be a second referendum in due course, maybe there won't. Maybe there will be a Brexit, or maybe there won't. That's the whole point of today's video, is because we don't know anything about what's going to be happening. Now, to draw it back into Precious Metals, which is part of the reason why I want to make this video here today, uh, ultimately, I am still buying silver. I'm buying silver as personal longer term investments as well as buying silver for my business. So it's relevant for me to think about and talk about what's going to be happening in the future as regards buying silver. And for those of you who don't really understand why that's a big deal if I'm talking about us leaving the European Union, uh, it's because there is sales tax, VAT, uh, in the UK on all sales of silver. So if you wanted to buy one of these 10 ounce Queen's Bees bulls, which are absolutely phenomenal, you would have to pay 20% more than pretty much anywhere else. And we mitigate that by buying from Europe from various dealers there where the rates of VAT are lower because of various different margin schemes and things like that. So those all will become kind of closed off to us. By the way, this is uh, a big scratch in a capsule here. It's not on the coin itself. Uh, I'm well aware of that. And uh, yeah, it's just one of those things that happens sometimes with capsules. Uh, so yes, Brexit not happening, going to happen, who knows. It, it is a mess and that's one of the reasons why I am going to continue to buy shiny silver over the course of the next couple of months. And it's, it, it's a really difficult one to predict uh, what's going to happen. Nobody really knows. One thing is for sure, if we don't leave the European Union at some point, it will completely undermine all democracy with here in the UK. Now, I don't really want to go into a merits of or merits against Brexit argument, debate, because that's really just boring and it's been done to death. Uh, ultimately, if we don't leave Europe, then it really is a complete middle finger to kind of the British people in general. And I didn't even vote for Brexit at the start, but if there was a second referendum, uh, I would vote to leave because it is the right thing to do. The majority voted to leave, we should leave. And whatever form that does, even if it goes against some of the uh, kind of principles that affect me as a private individual. You know, buying silver from Europe is going to be very difficult to do in the future. Uh, and it's just one of those things. But anyway, look, I don't really want to get into the politics of it. I want to talk more about how it all relates to precious metals. So in this last week, we saw a very, very big dip in the value of the pound, which was very joyous. I'm just going to open up uh, the price charts now. But basically, uh, when Theresa May uh, resigned. It was a big hit to the pound and that of course then main, uh, meant a big rise in the relative price of gold and silver for us here in the UK. So for those of you in the US, the wondrous uh, you know, priced gold and silver in US dollars, um, it was a pretty it went up a little bit last week but it didn't go up particularly uh, you know, significantly at all. Um, but we saw, I think it went up by about $10 for gold an ounce, which is not a huge amount. But for us in the UK, it went up by quite a considerable amount. We're talking sort of £20 an ounce at one point, I think it was at a bit of a peak. Uh, and that's simply because of the unknowns about what's going to be happening uh, in the world. And that is exactly what silver and gold are meant for. I love these, by the way, these three new acquisitions. So by the way, these are three new acquisitions that I've made uh, over the last couple of weeks. Uh, this off the Silver Forum, this, I absolutely love this Engelhard bar, and these two from the European Mint as part of the group orders. But because of the value of the pound going down and down and down, 
We saw the big rises in silver and gold prices, yet I'm still buying. And a lot of people out there who are new to gold and silver might be thinking, well, why are you still buying if gold, gold prices are going up well and silver prices are going up? Well, they're a hedge, they're a protection. And I've said that so many times on my channel before. I just can't get enough of this silver shiny stuff. It's so wonderful. It really helps protect your assets, your money. So the pound went down and prices went up. And you think, oh, that's that's a really good thing. My, my gold stack's gone up in value. My silver stack's gone up in value. Fantastic. Well, first off, you never make a profit on anything or a loss on anything until you actually sell it and release that equity. So from that perspective, no, you haven't, you haven't earned a single penny from the gold prices going up. They could crash down tomorrow or they could skyrocket again the day after. You just never know. Um, also, because the value of the pound went down quite so much, if you had money in the bank, which was pounds, then theoretically that buys you less. Uh, and if you are going to be buying stuff from Europe in terms of silver, or if you're even going to be buying gold from bullion dealers in the UK, your pound doesn't go as far as buying your weight, so you won't be able to buy as much gold for your money. Uh, so it does affect you. It might you might think, oh yeah, it's it's great to see uh, you know gold prices go up, but ultimately, if it's something that's going to uh, affect your immediate kind of purchasing power. That's not necessarily a good thing, but one thing is for sure that having these precious metals in that long run will preserve the wealth. That is exactly what they are for. Now, I've also seen a couple of different comments over the last few weeks. It's one of my uh, old videos that I've got of uh, why buying 1200 ounces was a big mistake. Um, you know, we've got that whole argument, that of that whole video was a whole argument around the fact that silver is incredibly heavy in, relative to uh, gold. I still don't think that the weight issue, and if you can sort out the weight issue in your own storage, your own you know situations, then I still think silver is a pretty good bet for the future. Now this isn't financial advice. This isn't me saying um, you know that you should go out and you should rush out and buy loads and loads of silver or gold. Even it's it's simply me saying that I think that as a long-term preservation of wealth tool, silver and gold have got a lot going for them. And if you look back at uh, historical kind of price charts, historical um, you know trends basically you see big drips uh, big dips and big dives and big highs and big lows for all of these things but ultimately they provide pretty good returns over the course of a lifetime which is ultimately one of the reasons why we're buying these now and an interesting thing that somebody said to me uh, the other day was they view their silver as basically little bricks little bits of houses so you know home equity is incredibly important and Obviously, bricks and mortar is one of the best places or best places to put your money. And it really is. You know, you can buy a house and then 10, 20 years later, it can have vastly appreciated in value against inflation. And it's a very good place to hold your wealth. It's real. It's physical. It's something there. People always need, need a place to live. And, uh, and this person said that they feel that silver and gold are just like little houses, little bricks that they can have. You know, this Engelhard bar here. 600 pounds worth of glorious kind of real estate investment as it were because when you look at the past history of silver and gold over the last say 30 40 years they hold up with the value of sort of equity growth in terms of housing and bricks and mortar which is i think a really interesting idea so you've got a brick of silver here which is quite literally a brick of silver uh, it's almost like it's a small little house in of itself but it's much more flexible than a house because you can sell this a lot quicker and easier than selling a property that's for sure so lots of really interesting insight there love to know your thoughts down in the comment section now as, as it sort of goes forward in the rest of this year i probably uh, we'll make another couple of videos on Brexit and the wondrous joys that is. One thing is for sure, it won't stop me buying silver in the short term. In fact, anything, if anything, the stay of execution on the end date of Brexit is, uh, is great. It means that we've got more opportunities to buy decent priced silver. However, with all of this Brexit shenanigans going on with the Conservative Party imploding and the other parties out there not really knowing what to do with the whole situation. It's kind of a cursed chalice, really, poison chalice. Then whoever takes up this new mantle is really going to be setting themselves up to fail, whatever outcome they get or do. So do let me know your thoughts down in the comment section about this interesting topic, whether or not uh, your plans have changed, your strategies have changed going forward with relation to purchasing silver or gold 
uh, as there are all of these new wondrous things to consider with Brexit. If you enjoyed today's discussion, then please do hit the thumbs up button. It really does help share my video around through the YouTube algorithm. And if you'd like to see future videos from me, please do hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And if you are subscribed, hit that little alarm bell and you'll get a notification when I upload future videos. Otherwise, that is about all I have to say. Thank you one and all for watching. I hope you have a fantastic weekend ahead. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.